Let's take this Philips Norelco shaver apart. No, I didn't pick this up at a thrift store. So the head top removes, and if you notice, it charges from the mains directly with no adapter. So that means there is going to be our power circuitry inside. That'll be interesting. Uh, get the little flip, well, maybe. Oh, there we go. Derp, it's the old style. It's not as fancy. Flips up, very excite. Uh, and the tech two screws. Don't, don't run this one underwater, unlike all the modern ones. It's so important that there's a sticker, so it's colorful, and the actual imprinting in the plastic. Are those security screws? Oh no, are those hex? Oh, I think they're, hold on. I think they're torxy type thingies. Oh, they are, yay. Fear not, they're only torx. I'm missing a step. This top piece gently comes off. Oh, derp, I'm a fool. That's what holds the top part on. I'm used to my new one. Flip this on. Aha, there's another screw hidden. It's not a terrible place for a screw, I like it. All right, now we'll just fall apart. Oh yeah, so that feels more like it. Oh, a little nickel metal hundred battery. This is surprisingly simple. This little tab looks like it holds on the... Ah, well, let's see. Well, that shows the gear arrangement. Nothing too exciting about the gear arrangement. Just a regular DC toy motor turns the center gear, which then affects the other three in unison. So if one stalls, uh, they all stall. They also come right out. So there's a gear set in the middle there that, let's see, does reduction. So the motor is spinning at a high speed. The connection here to here causes a reduction, and then it's further affected by the other pieces. But yeah, because it's the high speed of the motor. And the center post here actually is slightly, it's got a rounded bit but it's off center. So that way the back part vibrates back and forth, which causes the cutting action. There's a set of fixed teeth and a set of mobile teeth, and that goes back and forth and kind of scissors the hair off. Achieved by this moving back and forth. All right, so the motor, take this part out. Let's see if the gear just lifts off gently. The motor is attached on the front by these two screws here, and then that's, that will, the gear will actually also hold it. But I'm not too concerned. It is just a DC toy motor. We do have a brand though. Well, we have some designation. FF260PA-4032. This bit here just had a little O-ring type thing. Separates out to reveal just a little spring mechanism and the top part is a standard head arrangement where that comes out nothing too particularly interesting there now the electrical actual electronics so we can see our nickel metal hydride battery uh, a tiny transformer so they actually have a full main supply in here or is it a switching so the mains comes in here going through a little fusible resistor straight into a bridge rectifier through there we've got this little led which i believe can be shunted by the circuitry but either way there is an LED for showing the charge status or whatever, and the negative goes directly to the negative of the battery. This complicated circuitry just runs this chip, which uses this transformer to probably be some sort of switching mode supply here, which then uh, one of the transformer goes to the positive end of the nickel metal hydride battery. We actually got some test points. It looks like the motor is directly connected to the battery through the switch. Seems to just be switching the negative to it. Because here's the negative of the battery and it looks all connected. Uh, and the positive is directly attached here to the battery. So by flipping that up, it turns it on. I mean, it's very possible I'm missing a track or two under here on the switch instead of the actual structural support pieces here. 
Either way, it, it may or may not uh, check the battery. Although, actually, I guess it doesn't matter too much because nickel metal hydrides are not like lithium. But they don't. It's not going to matter as much if you run it dead. I'm pretty sure, um, especially because it's charge circuitry. We'll have to check out what circuit is on here. But this is a uh, NXP TEA one five two one T. There's all kinds of test points around here to play with. Uh, this side of the silkscreen is pretty much all the way marked, even though there is a silkscreen on top. They do actually mark what's on the other side in general cases, which is quite nice. Very, very good silk screening job there. Lovely through hole parts on the top. Uh, overall, <laughs> you could almost repurpose this into like a little race car. It's got all the charge circuit built in, it directly drives a motor. Yay! It screams occasionally once it starts resonating. Overall, it's not too crazy. See the plastic molding just has a little click in there. This switch actually has no click to it at all. It's just a very smooth slide. Uh, your entire click action is done by these teeth here grabbing onto this post. And that part's what moves the lever. Uh, you can see there's a little light pipe on the front to guide out the tiny charge indicator light. Very nice case on it and everything. Quite impressive. It's actually universal voltage, so we'll to, that charge tip must do quite a bit. Not too much else to see. This is just an overly elaborate system down here. I can't get for flipping up this part. Mmm, life. Oh, these are cute spring arrangements too. I mean, it makes sense, but I just like how it's all in one. This, Actually, the gear part, the spring in the middle, and this plastic piece that just kind of sits on there. If you're replacing the battery, you might only have the slightest of trouble actually getting enough uh, heat into the pads to pull out the battery without, you know, actually breaking any tiny connections around it. Um, because you definitely can't solder your own tabs in yourself reliably unless you have a whole, whole setup. Um, but it is possible. Oh, and they did actually double stick foam it down so it is, it is very rigid from both the solder and from it being held by that. Yeah, so you can see the area you would have to do to replace the battery. Although I wonder if it's a dimension that you could fit a holder. Here's a double A sized battery. You can see it is identical, so maybe you could retrofit a little holder if you had a very positive reinforced way to hold it in there. Although I don't think it'd matter too much if it disconnected. But at least they did use a, a standard size. I imagine this is just a standard... Oh, we can find out. Oh, that switch in there, so it's so easy to hit. Oh, come on. Ah. 1.27. That is a standard nickel metal hydride battery. Yeah, I wonder if you could put a little holder on there. Just too... If you could, not remove, if you could carefully remove the tabs from the battery. Might be able to fix... A fix a regular double A nickel metal hydride cell right in there. There you go, hack options. One very nice thing to note is that all of the screws are identical. I mean, except for the motor ones, but that's kind of that's not really much they can do. Oh, stop it! But yeah, all of the all of these screws in it are identical. So that is a good cost saving measure on their end, as well as making it very convenient for putting back together if you take yours apart. Correction, there are three little O-ringy type things that go some orientation on here. So do not forget that and don't lose them. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, do that like thing, and I will see you later.